Kevin's great thingamabob. Oh, you just don't know what words are. That's your thing. Run away, run away! Bend over and grab your ankles. You know, a couple days ago, we uh, talked about the new Little Mermaid movie, which is uh, atrocious, and I, I haven't seen it, but of course I can say that. Uh, you don't need to see it in order, in order to say that. Uh, one of the songs in that movie that went viral for all the wrong reasons, if you're Disney, uh, because it's like potentially the worst song ever made. It's just, it's just terrible. And so it was suggested to me by McKenna that uh, because I so hated having to suffer through that song, uh, what we should do today is play a bunch of other terrible Disney songs. So let's just, uh, let's start with this. This one is from, this one's from Moana. Let's uh, watch a little bit of it. Shiny, like a treasure from a sunken pirate wreck. Scrub the deck and make it look shiny. I will sparkle like a wealthy woman's neck. Just a sec, don't you know? Fish are dumb, dumb, dumb. dumb. They chase anything that good us. Beginners. Oh, and here they come, come, come to the brightest thing that glitters. Mm, fish dinners. I just love free food. All right, yeah. No, no, no. no, it's not five. Turn it off. Stop. So here's the thing. I saw Moana. I believe I've seen Moana. I think I took. I probably, I think I took my kids to see it when it, when it was, I, I saw it in theaters with, with my, with my kids. Right. Sure. And uh, I remember thinking that it's not terrible. I remember thinking that. It's not a remake. So that was my first thing going in. It's not a remake. They're actually making original content. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing woke in it. And it's like, it's not, it's not terrible. <laughs> but I don't, re I don't remember this at all. I must have. I must have blocked this from my memory. I must have suppressed this deep down in the recesses of my memory because I have no recollection of this awful song or I don't know what's happening in this scene. Is she about to be eaten by this crab thing? That is pretty bad, but it's not, it, it doesn't rise to the level of the, the Little Mermaid song. So let's keep going. This one is from, uh, okay, this is from the new Pinocchio, I guess. Let's listen. I'll design the perfect wooden shoe. And then we'll sing and dance the whole day through. If you get splinters, I'll be there. Peter, I'm your conscience, Jiminy Cricket. Ah, bug! That's in the running. That's that's competing. For, is that trying to be bad? Is that the joke? And the other thing about the, the Pinocchio remake is how, how many Pinocchio movies do we actually need? Like this movie, there are so many versions of this movie. And I know this because recently I was trying to... Uh, put Pinocchio on for my kids, like the original, you know, the the one from the 60s or the 50s or whenever they came out. And I was trying to put that on for my kids, and I, so I typed Pinocchio. There's like, there's 15 versions of this movie. Every year they come out with a Pinocchio remake. Is it really the kind of movie that it's like there's so much in that story that we need to keep retelling it over and over again? I'll bet a lot of you folks don't believe that, do you? Like the kids don't like Pinocchio. Pinocchio written said that the, uh, you know. Pinocchio written said that the Pinocchio written said that the Pinocchio written said that the kids don't like Pinocchio, uh, you know. So I think Pinocchio exists as the kind of story and the kind of movie that kids hate, and it's it, this is not modern. It's like it's always been this way. Kids hate it, but then they become parents, and their perception of the story changes, and they try to force their kids to watch it, and the kids still don't care. So Pinocchio was never great, but they somehow made it worse with that song. In the not-too-distant past, private citizens used to be largely that, if you can imagine, private. What's changed? Well, the internet changed. Think about everything you've ever searched for, watched, or tweeted on the internet. Now imagine all of that data being crawled through, collected, and aggregated by third parties into permanent public records. To keep my data private when I go online, I use ExpressVPN. There are hundreds of data brokers out there whose sole business involves buying and selling your data. They don't even have to tell you who they're selling it to or get your consent either. One of these data points is your IP address. Data harvesters use your IP to uniquely identify you and your physical location, but you can mask your IP address with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes my connection through an encrypted server that makes it more difficult for third parties to find me. If it sounds complicated, it's not, because all you have to do is just tap one button on the app and then you're protected. So if, like me, you believe that your data is your business, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN on the market. Use my link expressvpn.com slash WalshYT to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash WalshYT. Clip three is, uh, I don't know what this is. Diane Guerrero. Encanto? Which one is that? Is that a Pixar thing? Oh, is that the Mexican one? That's the Mexican one. Okay. Go ahead. Grow rows and rows of roses Fill the mile by the mile Poses, so much hugs behind my smile. What could I do if I just grew what I was feeling in the moment? Oh, you know where you're going. 
All right, that's enough of that. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a like a pop song. It sounds like a modern pop song, and I mean that in the worst possible way. I don't mean that as a compliment. It just sounds like the kind of just just like it's not aggressively obnoxious. I don't think it doesn't it doesn't make your uh, it doesn't it doesn't make you nauseous listening to it. It's not good either. It's just nothing. But there's no charm to it. That's the other thing. You know, the, the old Disney movies, those songs, you still remember those songs because they had there's a certain kind of charm to them. And all this stuff, when they make these remakes in the new Disney movies, they're not able to capture that charm and that enchantment anymore. They don't, they don't have it because all of these movies are made by, they're not made by storytellers, okay? They're made by committee. They're made by like, it's like these are corporate products and they're made by marketing departments and they sit around in rooms and meetings and they come up with these stories uh, based on, you know, what's going to make those money and how can they merchandise it and how they can they sell it. That's all that matters. So there's no there's no magic to it. OK, Encanto is not the Mexican one. So that's deeply racist on my part. You vile racist. This segment's going great. Let's listen to this one. Now I know. Okay. Yeah, I could tell that's new. I could tell that's new. It, it 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 sounds like it's their impression of the kind of a Disney song. They're doing a. It's like they're doing. It's a parody. It's a parody of a '90s Disney song, but but it can't actually capture the essence. And it also looks so stupid. That's <laughs> like if you take the Beast and you try to make it realistic. Let's make it gritty and realistic. You have this humanoid buffalo creature. Let's make it realistic. Uh, and it looks ridiculous. And I'm not going to get into the whole thing about Beauty and the Beast. We've already talked about it. All my problem, my many problems with the story to begin with, you know, and the fact that Gaston is the real good guy in the story. We've, we've talked about that. But she goes, she gets kidnapped by, an, by a, a beast, like an animal. It's not even a human. And falls in love with it. Remember, she falls in love with that thing before she doesn't even know. Wait a second. Does she know? Does she know that he used to be a human? I don't think she knows that. So it's not even like she she's she's falls in love with the potential or she knows that he used to be a human. And if she, yeah, she thinks that he's literally just like a buffalo creature, a talking buffalo. And she falls in love with, with, with him. Disney's been woke for a while because they're promoting bestiality even all the way back in the 90s. All right, um, I guess we should finish this up. Should we finish this up by, by watching that uh, Little Mermaid song again, listening to it? Probably not, but let's do it anyway. Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up! What? Hey, have you not heard the scuttlebutt? Your butt. No, the gossip, the buzz, the who said what, who does that, yeah, the scuttlebutt. Well, I was flying over land and sea and ear to the ground. Then I came flying here for you to see and hear what I found. Remember the swamp? Remember right. my son? Yeah, we didn't need to do that. We didn't need to do that. Uh, nothing comes close to that. When you listen to that again, you realize that it, it's just, that exists on a, on a tier that uh, none of these other songs, the other songs are bad. They're just bad. They're bad. So there are a lot of, Bad songs are a dime a dozen. You hear those all the time. That though transcends badness. It reaches some other. It's it's almost it's impressive. It is actually I'm almost impressed by it. A strange new respect that you could put, make a song that terrible. Good. I think this is productive, and uh, and I think it's stop. Nice. Okay, we've heard enough. All right. Good. 